So thank you guys for joining us and um, welcome to our very first 2GM town hall meeting. And we're super excited today. So we've got um, Jeff Brown, the co-founder of the Grills and Micronaut Framework. And we also have James Klee here, the development lead for Micronaut. And we also have Puneet, the development lead for Grails. And we have a special guest, David Estes. And he, well, I, I will let him um, go do a little introduction of himself, but, we're, but he is the um, creator of the Grails Asset Pipeline. And um, we, we're just really pleased to be able to have you here today, David. Um, did you wanna go ahead and, and tell people a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Jen. Uh, I'm David. I've, I've actually spoken at a couple of Grails conferences back in the day, so I may have met some of you. Um, I'm the creator of the Asset Pipeline. I've done other Grails core contributions as well and pull requests, and um, I think I've got over 20 plugins in the Grails ecosystem. So, yeah, been around a while, still love Grails, still actively developing it. Thank you so much. Yes, we appreciate everything that you've done. So, um, we, we do want to go ahead and get started um, here. And um, we, we're going to go ahead and pass it off first to um, James. He's going to go ahead and um, talk a little bit about uh, Micronaut. Thank you, Jen. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to, since this is sort of the first uh, 2GM town hall, I'd like to go over a little bit about um, you know, how we got to where we are today in Micronaut and where we started from and uh, share some information about uh, the community and how, how involved the, the people are in Micronaut to contributing it and uh, involved in other uh, community aspects. And then I'll talk about a recent release of Micronaut 2.0 and some of the new things that were included in that release. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about what's to come with Micronaut in the future. Hey, James, before you really get into it, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, we ought to encourage folks to recognize the Q&A section of the meeting. And if folks uh, have questions that you'd like for us to address during the conversation, uh, please enter those questions in the Q&A uh, part of the app. And uh, some of those we may be able to address as we go. And at the end of the meeting, we will have a, a Q&A session where we can um, uh, navigate, through, uh, navigate through those. So to the community, if you have questions that you'd like us to uh, consider addressing during the meeting, please enter them into the Q&A section of the app and, uh, and we'll get to those uh, either during or at the, end of the, uh, uh, at the end of the session. So uh, please carry on, James, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, uh, you can go to the next slide. All right. Uh, so we've actually, uh, you know, Micronaut is still, I think, considered to be, you know, uh, you know, the new kid on the block as far as frameworks are concerned, right? Um, uh, but we've been working on Micronaut, you know, for over three years, and uh, you know, I, it doesn't uh, seem like it was that long ago to me, but um, but it definitely has been three years. Initially, we started out um, in March of 2017, and it was, at that point, it was called Project Particle. And then um, uh, uh, about a year later, we, we went open source with it. So we worked on it, um, obviously, you know, um, not all the time, but we worked on it a large percentage of time during that period. Uh, we, you know, we were still obviously pushing Grails forward uh, during that point uh, with the release of Grails 4. And, um, uh, and then in, we went 1.0.0 in October of 2018. And it took us uh, about a year and eight months or so to, to finally release 2.0, right? And Micronaut follows semantic versioning, which means that we're, we're not going to, we're going to do our very best at least to not introduce any breaking changes between uh, in minor or patch releases. So 2.0.0 was our first chance to uh, actually introduce some major improvements to the framework that required um, a, a, a breaking change. So we were happy about that release, and uh, and now that we're uh, we're you know at this 2.0 stage, we'd like to um, stick to a, a regular release schedule with uh, uh, patch releases every you know like one to two weeks, 
uh, minor releases every six weeks and, and uh, likely a major release uh, every year. Those, uh, those minor releases every six weeks, uh, it's uh, worth pointing out that uh, because of the semantic versioning uh, and the, the discipline that we're trying to uh, impose around all that, that we really haven't had uh, uh, the, the upgrades from point release to point release are really qu quite easy and folks uh, don't have uh, a lot of trouble keeping up to date with the latest releases. And those, uh, those small, the small release cycle is, uh, is helping with that as well as um, uh, the discipline you mentioned about uh, uh, not introducing breaking changes along the way. So the uh, sort of net effect of some of that is keeping your Micronaut applications up to date with recent versions of Micronaut is, uh, is a lot easier than it would otherwise be. And, and over the last couple of years that we've been uh, managing these, these upgrade, uh, updates, um, it really has been the case that updating significant, not just trivial apps, but updating significant Micronaut apps to more recent versions of the framework are uh, really is generally a, a pretty easy task. Um, yeah, even in the case where we do introduce breaking changes, like for 2.0, uh, when it's possible uh, and when it's feasible, we all also introduce the ability to revert back to the previous behavior through configuration, right, as well. So, um, uh, so it's, it's generally pretty easy. And, and for those who aren't familiar with semantic versioning, like a patch releases, you know, which is the last number, um, there's only bug fixes. Uh, and uh, which means no features or improvements uh, in, in a patch release. It's only backwards compatible bug fixes. And then the minor releases are for um, improvements and new features. And the major release is for anything that's a breaking change, which could be a bug fix or, or uh, an improvement. And, uh, and since, since this time of, of open sourcing Micronaut and, and you know, releasing 1.0 and 2.0, our community has grown uh, quite a bit. Um, these are some, you know, some stats uh, here on the slide about uh, our engagement. Um, we have a Gitter channel, or we have a, a Gitter community, a set of channels on Gitter. And so if you're interested in asking uh, Micronaut questions, that would be the place to do it. Uh, I think we have a link maybe at the end um, uh, to, the, to the Gitter community. And, um, and the, the, the stat that I'm sort of the most proud of there is that we have uh, over 250 unique contributors to the core repository, right? So, so Micronaut is, is not just core, right? So there's the, under the Micronaut projects org and GitHub, there's like, um, uh, I wanna say that between 30 and 35 sub projects, right? That are represent usually integrations with other technologies. And um, there's uh, contributors to those repositories. And some of those repositories are actually uh, almost entirely driven by the community. So they were contributed in their entirety by the community and are maintained by the community. Um, so, uh, so we have a lot of engagement on, on, uh, on GitHub with contributions and you know, whether that be documentation or, or code, uh, you know, we, we obviously appreciate all contributions. And uh, so, you know, I only see this uh, expanding on in the future and um, really, really thought about that. So um, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the great features uh, that came in Micronaut 2.0 was Micronaut Launch. And uh, so Micronaut Launch is a website that you can go to. It's micronaut.io slash launch. And you can generate applications um, generate Micronaut applications, so you don't need to have anything installed in your machine locally in order to do so. We, we, have, we had a Micronaut CLI, and we still do have a Micronaut CLI that you can use on the command line. Both Launch and the CLI use the same uh, code behind them, so they should behave exactly the same. Um, but uh, one stat to show here is that we, we launched this, this website less than, um, less than six months ago. And we already have almost uh, 20,000 applications have been created just through launch, right? So, um, so we, we, don't, uh, we don't send any statistics through the, the CLI, right? Because that's running on, on your machine. Uh, so we don't have any numbers for that. So this is just the launch website, 20,000 applications. And uh, some statistics about that, you'll find here that that in the majority of cases, people use choose the defaults, right? Which is um, Java and Gradle on our website. Um, but uh, Maven still has a strong showing and Kotlin has a, a strong showing as well, right? 
So this is the percentage of the applications created. And, uh, and so as far as some of the, the main features of Micronaut 2, we introduced new Gradle and Maven plugins. Right? In Micronaut 1, we had no build tooling uh, support. Um, and now in Micronaut 2, we do with both Gradle and Maven. We added support for Groovy 3 and JDK 14. And then in Micronaut 2.1, we actually now support JDK 15. Um, uh, and it introduced better performance, better start times and memory consumption, a lot of improvements uh, for Graal VM, right? We've, uh, we've been working uh, really hard on our Graal VM support to ensure that all the things that, um, that you can do with Micronaut work with Graal VM, which includes um, uh, trying to get those improvements back to the library authors, because most of the time the issue is not with our code, because as you know, Micronaut doesn't use any reflection, which is sort of the, the enemy of, of Gravium. Uh, but uh, usually the issue is, is third-party libraries. Um, like for example, um, we have an integration with Flyway and, uh, and we're trying to get the Gravium um, uh, configuration to be merged into the Gravium, into the Flyway uh, module, instead of us having to maintain a separate copy of it. Uh, we added servlet support, so you can create, because uh, traditionally Micronaut is built on Netty, but there's a lot of people that like uh, the servlet style, and there's a lot of existing um, uh, code, you know, out there that's based off servlets. So we added support for, I think, Jetty, Tomcat, and Undertow as, as, uh, as servers for Micronaut that you can choose. We added support uh, for HTTP2 in our Netty server, and um, a whole, a whole other host of, of features and improvements. And so, what's next? Um, we uh, we have we have a, you know, a, 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 a library called Micronaut Data. Right? If you're not familiar with it, it's um, similar to Spring Data. If you if you've used that in the past, and uh, we'd like to, we will be adding more support to Micronaut Data for different types of data stores. Um, as well as adding in support for reactive SQL. So that's all, um, you know, those are all things that we intend to do. And it, no, not, there's not a lot of real work that has been started on those yet, but this is, um, you know, uh, probably things in 2021. Uh, more integrations with cloud providers. There's a lot of cloud tools out there that, that people want to use with Micronaut. Um, you know, so between all the different providers, there's you know, a, a, a numerous amounts of them that people want to use. And so we want to integrate more and more with cloud providers. A Kotlin DSL for Gradle. So for users that are, that want to use Kotlin, um, uh, we're going to offer the option to use the Kotlin DSL in our generated Gradle projects uh, through uh, Micronaut Launch. And that should be coming uh, soon, actually. That should be for next release. Hey James, there's, there's a question in the Q&A right now related to Kotlin, um, and uh, so now may be a good time to address that. But uh, the question is, uh, is just do we have plans to take advantage of the Kotlin compiler plugin? Uh, can you say anything, uh, a brief update on that? Yeah, so currently we use KAPT, which generates Java stubs from uh, Kotlin. And then we uh, read those Java stubs in our Java annotation processor. And that works for uh, the vast majority of, of use cases. Um, there are some edge cases in which uh, it doesn't work very well, uh, specifically with um, annotations and, and where they're placed in the, in the generated Java stubs. And so using a native Kotlin compiler plugin would allow us to better handle those situations and also perhaps support uh, more specific Kotlin features. And that's definitely something that's on our radar that we want to support. Um, so I would, uh, you know, keep your, keep your ear to the ground and, and hopefully we'll be able to produce that. Yeah, the, the, Kotlin, uh, the Kotlin community has, has really enthusiastically embraced uh, Micronaut. Uh, we see that uh, manifest in a lot of places. Uh, a lot of the questions asked on Stack Overflow, the sample code is in Kotlin. Uh, we see bug, you know, bug reports or feature requests. People are describing things in terms of Kotlin. Um, uh, it was interesting to see how popular the framework has been and continues to be uh, to the uh, to the Kotlin community, and that that's fantastic. Absolutely, 
And we're also looking for, uh, we're also looking into adding support for Scala as well, right? So that's on our radar. Um, that's one of the most, um, most upvoted issues on our GitHub tracker is adding support for Scala. So that's on our, on our radar as well. Uh, we also want to add support for more authentication options in our security module. So um, uh, uh, things like uh, JAS or Kerberos or, um, or uh, other, uh, other OAuth methods like client credentials grant. So those are all things that um, are on our radar. Client credentials grant we've scheduled for uh, an upcoming release. Uh, integrations with more messaging solutions. Um, so we're currently working on integration with MQTT, but we uh, are also looking into things like Pulsar and JMS. And, uh, in, and obviously we're always looking to improve our existing uh, features and, and uh, improve performance, right? So those are, those are things that are sort of always on our radar, uh, looking for ways to do those. And that's, uh, that's it for the Micronaut update. Awesome. All right. So we've got um, Jeff, unless there's any uh, questions that would be now um, uh, good for James to jump in and answer, we can go ahead and go to Puneet to give us um, some Grails updates. Yep, there are questions uh, accumulating in the queue, but uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and press on and we'll address okay. those uh, at the end. All right, awesome. All right, Puneet, you're up. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, so I am here in India, and uh, today I would like to talk about uh, Grail Spore. I know it, although it has been a while, Grail Spore is out there, but I would like to highlight some of the features and what uh, comes with Grail Spore, and then followed by uh, the my latest milestone releases for Grail Spore 1.0, what we have plans and the roadmap uh, for the Grails further, and then some sneak peek into Groovy 3 and Groovy 4. So uh, Grail Spore came up with uh, Groovy 2.5. Uh, there's been a bunch of uh, improvements in Groovy 2.5, and uh, although there are some breaking changes, but uh, overall it should be fine for you to update to Grail Spore and uh, not worry about all of Groovy changes. So uh, I'll talk further about uh, Groovy 2.5 in the next slides. Uh, with Grail 5, uh, Gr Grails, uh, in previous version of Grails, we supported Gradle 3 and Gradle 4. I think in the earlier versions, we had Gradle 3. And in the later version of Grails 3.3, we also supported Grails 4, uh, Gradle 4. So uh, if you are not, for average user application, updating to Grails 4 would just be fine if you're just defining dependencies. And if you're doing something specific uh, to Gradle and some custom logic in your build script, then I think you would need to take care of uh, you know, uh, looking into the Gradle documentation and updating the things accordingly. We have also updated uh, to Spring and uh, Spring Boot uh, libraries in Grails uh, 4. Uh, for, for Spring, I think uh, you, uh, as far as Grails application is concerned, I don't see anything uh, that would like any impact, uh, folks. But uh, if you are using something very specific to Spring, uh, then I think, again, you need to go back and check the documentation in order to update to the Spring 5. And Spring Boot 2 uh, has some changes around configurations related to embedded servers and embedded server APIs and uh, some endpoints configuration. So, uh, but, but I think those are pretty straightforward and you should be able to just update those configurations. Uh, another thing we uh, updated is GOM, uh, GOM 7. We updated from GOM 6 to GOM 7. Now GOM 7 uh, requires minimum of 5.8, 5.3. Uh, in uh, in there, there are some changes, but uh, yeah, but uh, you cannot go uh, to the previous version uh, in order to use uh, you know Hibernate earlier than 4.3. So uh, with GOM 7, there are some additional changes like uh, you know you should uh, earlier in Grails application you were able to use uh, some uh, <clears throat> live domain access within the controllers, but all those things would now require a transaction. So either you need to wrap those things inside a transaction or just uh, use add transaction annotations on your controller methods. Uh, otherwise, if you are uh, following the standard practices and using all your uh, domain access or data access in the services, then I think you should not need to worry about that. Uh, another important thing which has changed in Grails 4 is uh, proxy behavior, but especially for has uh, By earlier Grails used to unwrap the proxies for you, but now you need to take care of that as well. Uh, as uh, you know, especially around those scenarios where you have inheritance, uh, you know, and uh, you're checking the proxies and all that stuff. 
uh, although we said Grails data store red uh, rest client has been removed here, but uh, that actually means that it has been moved out from the GOM uh, core, and uh, that is now a separate plugin. If you want to use it, you can use it at firing a dependency in your Grails build. But uh, we would strongly recommend uh, you to move towards Micronaut HTTP client, which is uh, far more better and uh, feature rich as compared to the Grails data store rest client. Uh, with Grails core, another thing we introduce is Micronaut integration. Uh, you know. Uh, Micronaut is based on, as my, James already mentioned, that Micronaut is based on low uh, memory footprint and fast acts, uh, fast startup times. And uh, in order to benefit from those things, we also introduce uh, Micronaut as a parent application context in a Grails application, so that now you could use all the most of the Micronaut features, which does not include server, in Grails application. We'll be talking uh, about those in the later slides. <clears throat> Uh, I just wanted to highlight one thing on uh, the highlights too is I know that uh, you know Hibernate does require transactional, but you can turn that off. So if you're upgrading from Grails three to Grails four and you don't want to go through all that effort, there are ways to disable that so you can move on. So yeah, right, and it works very well. Yeah, and, and uh, one thing I think I missed in the previous slide was uh, the minimum uh, requirement for Java is now JDK eight. Uh, I think it's time we should all move to Java eight now or maybe Java eleven. Uh, with Grails core, uh, since we updated to Groovy to, to Groovy 2.5, there are a bunch of improvements in Groovy. One of them, like uh, there is no more Groovy all jar, and you know which in the past created a lot of conflicts. So now uh, you should, uh, although you could achieve the same via the all bomb, uh, but uh, yeah, those things have been removed. There are some new, apart from that, there are some new annotations introduced in Groovy or extensions uh, such as you know. Uh, math constructor, auto final. So I would strongly recommend you to take a look and use those in your application. You know that that helps uh, in the developer productivity. And yeah, uh, one important thing while updating to Groovy 2.5 to note is that the date extension which we had in uh, Grails, like uh, you know we used to do date plus something like that, uh, would not come by default. In order to use that, uh, you need to include get Groovy date util dependency in your build script. So that would, uh, yeah, that would just work fine. So apart uh, Java 11, Groovy 2.5, I think uh, with Grails score, you, uh, there is also support for Java 11. So you could uh, use Java 11, but there would be some warnings and uh, uh, there are ways to disable those warning. And you know, those are all about uh, illegal access or reflective access, which would go in the next versions of Groovy. So, yeah. Uh, talking about the plugins, one of the, you know, uh, one of the strong suit of Rails is the plugin ecosystem. Like there are a lot of plugins available for you. And uh, if we talk about, uh, you know, uh, migrating from Rails 2 to Rails 3, uh, that has become one of the drawback as well, where you have to update all of the plugins. But, uh, you know, the upgrade path from Rails 2 to Rails 3 is not uh, same as updating from Rails 3 to Rails 4. Most, uh, I, I, I noticed from, I heard that for most people, it's just updating the dependencies and the configurations and it's voila, that works for everybody. And uh, most plugins should work just fine. And uh, some plugins uh, which require the changes, we have already updated those. Uh, one one thing to note here is like, if your plugin is using something very specific to, you know, uh, the changes in Spring or underlying libraries like Spring Boot, then you would need to update those as well. Uh, there, there, there is one change in Grails core. I think uh, we used to have Grails domain class in the, in the Grails core, and uh, uh, which which basically map your properties and fields in, on a on yeah. And then uh, we also had the same concept in uh, uh, GOM, which is persistent entities. So we we and then the later version of Grails we deprecate uh, delegated that stuff to uh, use the persistent entities, and in Grails core we removed that. So if you are using that, you need to update those things as well. <clears throat> and uh, Anna, yeah. Yeah, Jen, can you please go back to the previous slide? Yeah, there is one, one more thing like with Grails view, we have already introduced Grails views, which you know basically use streaming JSON builders and markup builders. And then uh, we also had this Grails converter plugin, although that, that is still available and uh, you can use it, but uh, we recommend you to move away from it as uh, there are a lot of issues uh, with this plugin using you know our thread and uh, uh, thread local and uh, some static uh, state, uh, which caused a lot of problems over the years. So, yeah. Yeah, I think what's good to note is uh, that is kind of being deprecated. It's at Grails converters, but um, a lot of stuff in there, uh, some of the helpers we're going to try to preserve and stuff like that too. So, um, but yeah, and definitely I, should be moving to Grails views if you haven't yet. 
yeah. And if you move to Grail's view, there would be significant improvements uh, in terms of performance. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. So uh, Micronaut integration, although we mentioned in the start, like you have the benefit of Micronaut uh, application context, but uh, and Micronaut brings it uh, with uh, you know faster startup times. Uh, the reason it uh, has though is like uh, Micronaut eliminates reflection, you know, no runtime proxies and uh, bytecode generation, and everything happens at compile time in Micronaut. So uh, leveraging more features from Micronaut or you know uh, functionality from Micronaut basically improves the performance of uh, Grails application, and I think that is one of the main reasons. We, we, we introduced Micronaut uh, in the Grails uh, core uh, to increase the performance of a Grails application. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, with, with Micronaut, like the things like HTTP client, you could use a Micronaut app HTTP client and a RapidMQ client, Kafka client in Grails applications. And uh, those are much more simpler and, and powerful than uh, the previous implementations. And uh, talking about the plugins, uh, if you are planning to create a new plugin, you may want to consider whether you want to create a configuration which would basically can be used in Micronaut and Rails and Spring Boot applications separately. And whereas Rails plugin would only be uh, able to use in Rails application. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so we unless there is a specific need, such as uh, if you are using GSP views or tag libs, I think uh, then you may need to use the Rails plugin. Otherwise, you should create configurations. Uh, you know, um, there is a project called Micronaut Spring, and uh, which basically uh, maps Spring annotations to the Micronaut annotation. And uh, I would recommend you to take a look at that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, there are some other things uh, comes with Micronaut, like the configuration properties. Uh, earlier, we used to have some uh, configuration in Dart YAML. You now create a bean and uh, use uh, configuration properties to map uh, the configuration onto the bean. And then uh, things like, you know, you may have. Uh, in your in descriptor, you may have things which are, which is like uh, create a bean only if this configuration is there. Then you can achieve those things using Micronaut requires and you know uh, uh, Micronaut annotations such as requires or replace a bean implementation. Uh, you know using these annotation and I would recommend you to use these things so that these can be used in uh, other other projects as well and not limited to Rails. And also uh, these would benefit from the compile time. You know uh, code generation and everything. And uh, if, unless you really need reflection, then uh, then you may want to use other things, but uh, these things would be very fast and performant uh, when you're working with Rails code application. <clears throat> yeah, one, one thing I wanted to mention there on that Micronaut stuff is just an example. I, I work on a multi-million line Grails app and our heap usage uh, on that application from Grails three to four because of Micronaut dropped from 2.7 gigs of heap um, to 1.9 uh, on startup. So. Just give you an idea of some of that benefit. So if you're upgrading, you're going to have a lot more room and resources available for you. So the Grails 404, the latest release for Grails is 404, which support Micronaut 137, and there has been up, uh, updates to GOM and as well. One thing uh, which which had some issues with Grails 404 is that uh, there was some bug in GOM data store core uh, where you need to explicitly override GOM dot version in your Gradle dot properties to 707 in order to get past that. But uh, apart from that, everything works fine. And uh, there has been some improvement in REST API profile and some fixes around the plugin configuration. And uh, there has been a significant improvement in performance of compiled Ruby pages and compiled JSON views, thanks to David. Uh, he did some work over there. And uh, there has been updated uh, Spring and Spring Boot libraries. Uh, Rails 405 would uh, be released with some more improvements uh, later this month, uh, you know, soon. <clears throat> other, other than that, uh, there, there are a lot of plugins and, and uh, those which have been updated, but I have listed only a few, like Elasticsearch plugin has been now been updated to support the latest Elasticsearch version. There's been some improvements around GOM, injecting GOM data services, and then uh, uh, GOM for GraphQL has been updated uh, from a very old version to GOM, GraphQL Java Library 14. Uh, yeah, please check it out. <clears throat> With the Grails 401 milestone, uh, the Grails 4 we recently released Grails 410 M2, uh, with, which supports Micronaut 2 and updates Spring and Spring Boot libraries. Uh, uh, and also, this this version supports uh, Ruby 3, and it is now based on Middle 6.5. Basically, all these projects like Views, GOM, and Grails Core have been updated to use Middle 6.5. Uh, what that means is like if you are updating to Grails 4.1, and if you have some custom uh, Grails uh, plugin, then I think uh, there are a few changes you need to do, such as uh, 
uh, use compile uh, class path instead of compile in the configuration and uh, and you know the dependency dependency scopes and you know java library and java api plugins so those you need to take care of those things apart from that everything just work fine and uh, for and the groovy team has been very helpful uh, to identify and fix if there are any bugs and uh, yeah and there has been some improvements in profiles where now profiles use the implementation and uh, Apart from that, uh, this MongoDB and Neo4j, apart from updating to uh, Groovy and Gradle, they also have been updated to the MongoDB sync driver 403, and same goes for Neo4j driver, which is 401. Uh, roadmap uh, further, it's like, uh, although this is not a complete uh, roadmap and we'll be updating it or maybe prioritizing things, uh, but uh, we would be planning uh, for a good support for web sockets or native support for web, web sockets and Rails application and, uh, Transaction support in GOM for MongoDB has been a long pending task. We'll be looking into that and uh, better, you know, CLI for support for creating Kafka listeners to plugins and leveraging Micronaut configurations for same. And uh, GSP has been a core part and tightly coupled with Grail score at this moment. And uh, we are planning to move it out from Grail score so that it could be used in Micronaut and Spring Boot applications. And, uh, you know, it is more modular. Uh, so. And uh, we'll be converting many more, uh, many more uh, uh, Grails plugins or internals to Micronaut over time to leverage the benefit from Micronaut. Uh, yeah, such as things like configuration properties and you know uh, plugin descriptors. And instead of using descriptor, we would be using uh, Spring configurations and with Micronaut Spring, and you know that will increase the performance. And uh, we one important thing we would be doing is updating the documentation around Micronaut and features, and you know uh, keeping it up to date and uh, more blogs around it. <clears throat> uh, we recently published Grail's State of Union blog. Uh, please take a look if you get a chance. There's a Grail's engineering meeting where uh, uh, we the Grail's team meets regularly to discuss the current activities around Grail's. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, meeting minutes are also recorded in the link provided there. And uh, if you if you are working on Rails Core or any plugin related to it, or if you have anything to discuss, please feel free to send an email to this email address, and uh, we should be happy to have you. And uh, you know, the Rails community list down the some of the community members from Rails community, and uh, there would be an upcoming session in uh, India, Bangalore, Ruby Rails meetup around Rails for features and development. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to I want to echo what uh, what you just said there, Puneet, about encouraging uh, community members who are contributing uh, to Grails or plugins. Please do reach out and uh, let us know, and we'll get you an invite to that uh, to the engineering meeting, and uh, that that collaboration, being able to talk to folks, uh, you know, in video and, and verbally, as opposed to all the communication happening in in uh, uh, Slack and email. Um, uh, it's really better to get folks together and to, to talk about ideas. And that's what, that's the goal of that meeting. That's the reason we've got that meeting in place is to provide a forum for uh, folks who are uh, not in the core team here at OCI. Uh, but uh, we, we need the, that engineering meeting is for the entire development team, not just the core team at OCI, right? So again, if you're, if you're involved in uh, Grails development or uh, are developing Grails plugins, and there's some reason that you would like to participate in that conversation, uh, as as Puneet said, please reach out to us. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and yeah, meeting minutes are also there. So please uh, take a look. If you have something to discuss, you could uh, share with, you could reach out to any of us in the Grail Slack or, you know, or just ping me directly if you want to. Everything is okay. So uh, yeah, I, I also, go, uh, if I can chime in too, I just wanted to say that, you know, Grails has been around for a while and I know sometimes it looks like it's slowed down, especially since there's not been conferences, but uh, it's definitely uh, picking up steam the past few months and I'm very excited about that. And I've seen a lot more community activity and also a lot more, um, you know, activity in the issues and, and all that type of stuff. So it's very exciting to see Grails pick back up. So. Yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff coming in in Grails, so stay tuned into the Twitter channel. And uh, for the Groovy 3 and Gro Groovy 4 roadmap, uh, I'll be talking about uh, what, what Groovy 3 brings along with it and uh, what's the plan for Groovy 4. We have, uh, with Groovy 3, we, we have a bunch of improvements and overall we, the compiler is more strict uh, with compile starting and the performance has also been increased. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is a new parrot parser which basically supports Java-like syntax like lambdas and, you know, uh, 
better Java syntax support, uh, such as you know, uh, do while and Java style array initialization. So you could just copy paste things into Groovy and it would run just fine. There has been new syntax, uh, you know, uh, like calling average on array, and there are some new methods. And uh, JDK 8 is now minimum, and uh, there are other improvements and JDK additions. Uh, uh, the important thing is the split packages, like uh, some of the packages has been renamed from old.colos.ruby to old plus apache.ruby and uh, some uh, some classes have been reshuffled to the appropriate packages and uh, although we have not removed the package, we still de deprecated it. So you should be able to use the deprecated and work, it, it would just work fine, but uh, we would recommend you to move away from those as in Ruby 4, we would be altogether removing those packages. Uh, there is a bunch of uh, features which I'm not able to talk about in this uh, in this session, but I think uh, if you take a look at uh, releases notes for Ruby 3, this will give you a, a good idea of what, what Ruby 3 comes with. Uh, Ruby 4 roadmap. So as we talked about naming and restructuring that uh, these, these packages like codehouse.ruby will be removed in Ruby 4 and it should be org.apache.ruby. There are some built-in type checker introduced, like you know, uh, regex checker, which would check your regex at compile time and throw any errors, such as if you are using an invalid regex, it'll fail at the compile time. And some of the annotations, like immutable and record type, are uh, converted from AST to the meta annotation, uh, you know, so that uh, providing you the flexibility to, to use the attributes from the constituent annotations on these annotations. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of things about that. One, um, at the uh, at the next quarterly uh, town hall meeting, um, we will uh, we will have uh, Paul King will join us and will provide uh, uh, some significant depth around what's going on in Groovy and what's coming up uh, with Groovy. And uh, one more Grails related thing. I know you so you talked about the four one roadmap, um, Puneet. Uh, did you mention a, a timeline for when we anticipate releasing four point one? That that's one of the questions that the community has asked. So yeah, there is a plan. Uh, we, we will be releasing four one later this year in uh, you know uh, November or something like that. Uh, we're just uh, doing mix and match between the milestone releases so that users get to test it out and uh, going back and updating the next milestone. I think one thing I forgot to mention that there would be a milestone three release soon, which would support uh, latest version of Spring and Spring Boot. We intentionally kept that out from milestone two so that it is easier for test and you know. With Gradle 6 update and Ruby 3 update, it, it, it was like a lot of moving parts. So we just wanted to come out with mixed milestone. Awesome. Thank you, Puneet. Uh, so I've got, uh, so a lot of you, know, probably all of you are aware that uh, earlier this year, we, uh, we were really excited to announce the, uh, uh, the Micronaut Foundation. And the foundation is up and running right now and is already, um, uh, um, sort of contributing and, and adding value to our, to our process. So uh, the foundation is in place um, for uh, so some of the reasons that you see uh, listed on the slide there. Are, I won't re read all that to you, but um, we, we want to, um, there, there are a number of functions that the, that the foundation serves. And one of them is that the, uh, the foundation includes a technology advisory board and that board is made up of representatives from a lot of important areas, sectors of our industry, right? So on the, the, the board are representatives from the core Micronauts uh, development team. Uh, we have representatives from um, uh, Google, ThoughtWorks, uh, Agile Developer, Mesosphere, JetBrains. Um, am I forgetting anyone, Jen? Uh, but we've got, we've got representatives from a, a number of different uh, Oracle, of course, um, a, a number of different um, uh, uh, organizations that are important in our industry, and that's that's really valuable and it's really helpful for us moving the framework forward. Um, we've done a really good job of uh, kind of thought leading these technologies, so both Micronaut and Grails. Um, but in particular, we've done a really good job of thought leading uh, Micronaut to where it is now, and we would continue to have success with that, but uh, we'll have even more success with the uh, a broader set of input, right? So the perspective of a database vendor uh, is different than the perspective of a cloud provider, which is different fr uh, from the perspective of a tool provider and, and so forth. So that technology advisory board is bringing together 
serious experts from different places in the industry and letting all of that input help us drive the uh, help us drive the technology forward and ensure that we're focusing on the things that uh, that are the most important and the most valuable to the community. The foundation is a, a really important part of uh, uh, Micronauts uh, current and future success. So we're really excited that that's out there up and running and um, that's all very, very good news. Go ahead. Uh, Jen, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. So we are um, really excited to be able to talk about um, some opportunities for the community to get involved in the foundation um, as well as um, co larger corporations. So um, as, as Jeff mentioned, it is a non-for-profit um, organization. And so we do rely on the financial support um, of our community and, and sponsors. So um, one of the things that we wanted to be able to do is not just um, give large corporations the opportunity to support, but also the community to support. So um, very soon you all will see um, some information come out and it will be a way for you to um, sponsor um, and get involved in uh, the Micronaut Foundation as an individual. Um, or if you want to bring back that information to your organization, you can absolutely do that as well. Um, so we wanted to be able to um, just really embrace the amazing community we have. And um, we're just, we wouldn't, people say this all the time, but uh, the, we're only as strong as the people around us. Um, and, and we really feel that way um, about our amazing community um, that we have. Um, the Micronaut community has, has done so much. And so um, we really wanted to be able to um, make you guys feel like you were a part of that. So um, we're excited about it and um, there's more, more details to come and just a, a sneak peek, but we're, if you um, donate um, to be one of the community all-star members um, for our community um, supporters that get a limited edition uh, swag bag. So here's a, here's a review of some of that, some of that fun swag. So um, some of it, you, you've probably seen a, a few of those before, some stickers that we've had, but we've made some special limited edition things um, that you can get as a, uh, Micronaut Foundation supporter. So we're pretty excited about that. Fantastic. Thank you very yeah. much for that. You're uh, welcome. Jen. So related to that, we've got a really, really cool uh, announcement to make today. And there it is. <laughs> Maybe you just saw it. <laughs> uh, so um, we are, in fact, uh, launching the, uh, the Grails Foundation um, shortly after we launched the Micronaut Foundation. The expected questions started uh, coming into the inbox and that was when is there gonna be a Grails Foundation? And the answer to that, uh, I guess we could say is today. Um, so we are in fact launching the, uh, the Grails Foundation and this is part of, uh, so the, the motivations for wanting to do that are the, the same kind of motivations that we have for, um, uh, for putting the Micronaut Foundation in place. And Jen, you can jump forward a slide. Um, the, the same situation there, we've got a technology advisory board to help provide insight into uh, what we ought to be focusing on, what we ought to prioritize. Um, so this is, uh, this is going to be, a, 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 just like it is for Micronaut, this is gonna be a really important part of uh, how, we drive the, uh, how we drive the framework forward. We will be um, embracing input from, again, uh, numerous areas of the, of the industry. We, and, and this is part of um, a, a more general pursuit that we put a lot of effort into this year, and that is we are uh, putting a lot of things in place to um, uh, better engage with the community, in particular, to better engage with um, the members of the community who are contributing to, uh, to the software. Not, not just that, sec, but that, that's one subset that in particular we're putting a lot, to, uh, a, a lot of activity uh, around. So the engineering meeting that, uh, uh, that Panit mentioned earlier is an example of that, right? We want to provide a forum that makes it easy for the community to recognize um, that they can contribute and provide uh, really great support for the uh, for them to contribute, and um, uh, of course the foundation is just one more piece of that. 
So there'll be uh, uh, details published uh, to the websites uh, around, the, uh, around the foundation, but uh, we're really excited to announce that. And uh, the, the Grails Foundation is going to be valuable to, uh, to Grails, as I said, for the same reasons that uh, uh, the Micronaut Foundation is, uh, is valuable and important to, uh, to the Micronaut Project and the Micronaut community. So all the folks who have been asking for the last couple of months about the Grails Foundation, today is, uh, today is your day, right? So uh, we really are excited to announce that and uh, we're looking forward to the continued success that Grails is going to have uh, moving forward. Um, all very exciting stuff. Uh, all of that, the community is really a really, really important part of, uh, of all of that. Um, David is a really good example of, uh, of uh, uh, a member of the community who's been actively engaged for a long time um, and has been uh, really terrific to work with. Uh, the, the, you mentioned uh, the number of plugins that you've uh, contributed, uh, uh, David. What, what was that number? I think last count it was actually around 27, but I don't have the exact number. I'd have to look. So I celebrate that you don't know the exact number. That's, uh, that, <laughs> that's, that's really good. Uh, so you've, you've contributed a lot. Um, and most of them work with Grails 4, by the way. I'm sorry? Most of them do work with Grails 4 still. Most of them do work with Grails 4. Uh, that, is, uh, that is in fact the case. The main thing that, or, or the, the big thing that, uh, uh, that you've contributed, one of the big things is the asset pipeline plugin, right? Um, and do you recall when you started building that? Um, man, uh, I was actually close to 2012, maybe. It's been, uh, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, that's probably about right. And uh, so in, in Grails 1, uh, there was uh, the resources plugin, uh, which was great and, uh, and helped uh, uh, what was a great asset to, uh, to the framework. And then in the Grails 2 era, um, we switched to defaulting um, all Grails applications, at least you, the ones that use the web profile now as of three. In Grails 2, there was no profile system. But as of Grails 2 and, and moving forward, the asset pipeline became the default asset management thing uh, for all Grails apps. So the percentage of Grails applications that are, that are out there in the wild that use asset pipeline is, uh, at least for web apps, is pretty close to 100%, right? Most, almost all Grails applications use your plugin. Uh, plugins, I should say. Uh, how have you have found the experience of interacting with the community and supporting those plugins and all the work that you've done? How would you characterize that experience? Oh, it was great. Super positive. Um, it was fun to actually, you know, I've been to a few conferences and spoken at a few. And actually, I think when I started, I was actually not a conference speaker per se. I didn't like doing it, but I got better at it. Um, and the community was very supportive in that. And I, I think I used to stay up late nights during conferences, adding new features that I'd get from community members when we'd have our little uh, meetings and, and social events. So it was good. So that staying up late at night to add features uh, that community members asked for uh, reminds me of something that happened uh, that, uh, with you, David, maybe four years ago or so. I was at a client site in a, in a meeting, sitting in a, a big meeting room with a bunch of developers. And at the beginning of the meeting, we were discussing some capability that they said, hey, if the asset pipeline would do this, that would be cool. And I Skyped you. Uh, is, is this ringing a bell for you, David? It is, but I don't remember at all what it was, but I do remember it. <laughs> so while we were in this meeting, and the whole meeting was like an hour long, while we're in this meeting, I Skyped David and said, hey, uh, this is a really good idea. What do you think of this? And uh, there was no immediate response. And then about 10 minutes later, there was a response. And he says, uh, hey, look at this. And there's a link to a commit. I said, uh, yeah, that looks like uh, what they want to do. And then uh, about 10 minutes later, there was a link to the release. So uh, a new version of the asset pipeline was published during this meeting that included a feature that, uh, as, far as, as far as I know, wasn't even on David's radar until, you know, a half an hour ago. So the time between when the feature idea was put in front of David and when the client, we actually demoed it in, the, in that very meeting. So the feature didn't exist. The idea, as far as I know, wasn't even in your head. And 40 minutes later, we were exercising the code you had published. That, that's amazing, sir. <laughs> Yeah, I think there was a, a Twitter feed for a while when it first came out that people were giving me a hard time of how frequent the updates were because I think I was putting them out about three or four updates a day at one point. 
Yeah. So did, did you just promise that if any community member ever requests no. a feature, you'll turn? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> very, nope. very well done. They can submit a pull request. I do welcome those. Absolutely. Pull requests are, are uh, definitely welcome. Uh, we encourage the community to, uh, to always consider that. Please, uh, please consider contributing. Even small contributions are, are appreciated. Uh, I'm not the only one who thinks uh, great things about uh, your involvement in the community, uh, by the way, David. Uh, so, so I really do think that you're a tremendous asset to the community um, and uh, genuinely thank you for your, for your contributions. No problem. I enjoy it. It's fun. Jen, is there uh, other uh, other quotes that folks have uh, mentioned? Yeah. Yep. So you've got a couple here. So of course, Graham is uh, is very supportive of uh, and appreciative and uh, uh, really loves the all the work that you have done uh, over the years uh, as well. Um, and uh, we really can't thank you enough. And um, thank you. So you, you're you're very much appreciated. So uh, we've got uh, we've got kind of a fun thing we want to do uh, with the community here. So uh, let's start. Who should we start with? D David, have you got your box there handy? I do. I have a box that ar arrived yesterday. Jen told me not to open it. All right. Let's see what you've got in that box. All right. It's going to take me a second. Jenny did a really good packing job here. If it was you. This is, uh, this is an added bonus at no additional charge to all the community members who are here. I, I know that uh, everyone loves unboxing videos. And uh, uh, so now you, you get a, it's an added uh, feature of this uh, town hall meeting is you get to see an unboxing video. Yeah, I'm going to start a YouTube channel now. Yep. David's unboxing. Oh, there's some paper in it. If yep. You guys are Beautiful brown color. And then inside is, is an, uh, another box. So we got to do all the way a down. couple times over. Mm -hmm. all right. I'm glad I brought the scissors. I was going to try and just brute force this thing. So exciting. We're so close. And then another box. <laughs> You're and another box. The... Oh, well, thanks, guys. You guys can't see it yet, can you? No. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh. Thank you so much. What does that say, sir? It says uh, David Estes, Grails Rockstar 2020. David Estes is in fact a Grails rock star, and the fact that we uh, acknowledged him in 2020 is not uh, an indicator that he has just become a Grails rock star. Uh, David, you've been I was at say, a good year. <laughs> Thank and, you so uh, much. Uh, so uh, we, as, as you know, and and uh, the community knows, uh, a month or two ago we put out a um, uh, the Grails rock star nomination. Uh, program and you were overwhelmingly recognized as uh, uh, deserving of the, of this uh, of this award, and I, I can't uh, overstate that. We really do appreciate what you've done. You're a terrific asset, and thank you. Thanks so much. I do appreciate it. I uh, plan on sticking around, so stay tuned for more updates. As do I, sir. We we should have a uh, we should have a good time. Yeah. Anyone else on the panel have anything to say about that? I do have a question. Does Great Conf beer work well in these? I have it, it does, in fact. Uh, I miss Great Conf beer. Um, I bet it does work very well with Great Conf beer. <laughs> so the community is, uh, is, in a lot of ways, is the most important part of this, this whole endeavor. And uh, David represents, uh, as, I, as you saw in the quarter, you're, you really are an exemplar of, of the uh, really, really terrific and uh, valued uh, community member. So uh, you should be proud of that. The community appreciates what you've done and uh, great work, good sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got just a couple more minutes and uh, there are, uh, so I'll navigate through a few of these questions that have accumulated in the, um, 
uh, in the Q&A pipeline. Um, a simple one, will the slides and Q&A be posted online? Jen, would you speak to that? Sure, yep, so we will make sure that everybody gets um, that signed up, we'll get a copy of the slides and we'll also um, post the video in the slides on our um, website as well. Yep. Perfect. So look for that. Um, there is, scrolling around in these questions are disappearing in front of me here. Let's see. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the questions is, is there any news or any kind of progress about Micronaut, Groovy, GraalVM, native image combo? So Groovy is the key there, of course. Uh, or is this a definitive dead end? So uh, James, can you uh, comment on the uh, Groovy and GraalVM relationship with Micronaut in particular? Yeah, so <clears throat> that's uh, it also included Grails as, as group. Okay, so no, I, I initially read that. I misread it too. <laughs> okay, yeah, Micronaut, Groovy, GraalVM. Yeah, so uh, the Micronaut um, as part of that combo is, is uh, this, you know, it's, uh, it's already working with GraalVM. Uh, as far as Groovy working with GraalVM, I think that largely depends on how you use Groovy. Um, I think if you were to use a uh, static compilation, then uh, that would be much less of a hurdle, although there still will be hurdles. Um, so I, I think in some aspects, it's unlikely that, that Groovy will work with GraalVM without a um, without um, without a lot of work, right? For that specific application, uh, depending because, you know, like I said, it depends on how you use it. Uh, so I I guess my uh, the only thing I would say is it's definitely not a definitive dead end. Um, and if you are using static compilation and uh, are seeing issues or, or are seeing problems running GraalVM native images to uh, create an issue in the Groovy Jira and see if they can uh, provide some configuration because if there's some configuration that makes sense for everybody then it should be included in the Groovy library. Yep. Uh, we've got uh, just about one minute. We'll take uh, one more of these questions. Uh, so are you providing DSL variation of Micronaut instead of annotations? Uh, can you comment on that, James? Yeah, so um, so uh, the short answer is that, that Micronaut core itself will likely almost assuredly always be based off of annotations. Um, uh, it has been identified, you know, so one of the reasons people use Grails and one of the reasons why Grails is great is because it has a convention over configuration approach, right? Um, where you have your controllers under Grails app controllers and uh, and you don't need to annotate them and there's all these uh, defaults that are built in that you know um, that just uh, that work well right uh, and with Micronaut that's not really the case there's um, you know you have to annotate your class with that controller and it doesn't matter where it is on your class path uh, so it's just a different approach right uh, so so one of the things that that enables the the um, the Grails approach of that you know convention is the usage of Groovy um, and and modifying your class's bytecode right and and that's something that Micronaut doesn't do. Having said that, I think there is a possibility in the future to create a more convention based approach based off of a pure Micronaut application, uh, not using Grails. And I think someone from the community has actually done like sort of a proof of concept of that. And that, um, and that seems to work, although, although I'm not sure if that works with Java and Kotlin. So to answer your question, it's not something that's on our radar currently. Um, you know, we listen to the feedback of our users and if uh, enough people say, hey, this is something that we want, then that's something that we'll prioritize. As always, right? Yep. Yep, good, uh, good input. Um, it is the top of the hour. We're about a minute or a uh, minute or two over. So we, uh, we should wrap it up and be, uh, be respectful of folks' time. But uh, I wanna say thank you to everyone for coming to the meeting. Uh, please provide feedback on um, uh, how you think the meeting is valuable or if you have ideas for how we can make this meeting more valuable to the community, please reach out to us. Um, these will be quarterly meetings moving forward. 
And uh, so we're, we're doing this to, to help the community. So your, your feedback into uh, how we can maximize that is, is appreciated. So please reach out to us and let us know. And uh, one last thing for me. So I, I know that the community members can't see the scrolling chat um, uh, that the panelists can see, but there are a whole lot of acknowledgements of congratulations to David. And those are, uh, those are very much appreciated. And uh, the last thing I'm gonna say is once again, thank you to you, David. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, David. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Great job. Thank yeah, you, David. Well, well deserved award. Thanks Everyone so have a terrific weekend and uh, build some micronaut stuff. <laughs> or grails. Or grails. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you to everyone for attending and uh, I wish you all the best.